And I think I'll be able to see the comments on here. But if not, that's why I'm going to go here on Facebook. Are we live? Peace, everyone. Peace, peace. Let me make sure it's good. It's 11 second delay, too. So. And we're at 15 seconds now. So we might be. Okay. Now, like, right. <laughs> Let me make sure it's live. <clears throat> yep, we are live. Okay, so. Make sure everything. Boom. And the setting is private. Mm, can you change it to public? I just did. Yeah. Okay. And then we're good for right second. <laughs> I'm going to tag you. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> all right all right so you and i can just get started and the people will flow and go as it goes so today welcome to everyone who comes in afterwards i am uh puta being with alien black girl podcast i am doing this live um interview and talk and conversation with Crystal Neath here, and she will definitely introduce herself. So I would love if you all are watching to like, share um, the the video, and also you can follow me on my Instagram um, at Alien Black Girl underscore and YouTube, where I also do some videos, Alien Black Girl, and my podcast, which is Alien Black Girl. So without further ado, I would like to introduce my guest. You may go ahead. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Um, I am just really excited about this whole spiritual movement. I feel like a lot of people have been on recently, especially within the last uh, couple of years, and I've known you for some time now. I know this has kind of um, been just the way you are. I think some of us are just naturally um, born this way. Some people are just athletes. Some people are, you know, whatever. And just some people just yeah. have that vibe. So it's such a beautiful thing to see the spiritual community being so open and accepted and people just wanting to learn more about themselves. So I'm super happy to be here with you uh, discussing something I love a lot, which is astrology. Mm -hmm. um, but to just get to the point, I am a Crystal Neath and you can, of course, follow me on Instagram. Uh, my name should be somewhere here on the screen. Um, and I'm on Instagram, like I said, Facebook, I'm most active on there. I am also on TikTok and also uh, YouTube. So yeah, that's about me. I've been a uh, practice. I've been in love with astrology since I was a little girl. Um, I have been a tarot reader professionally for the last five years now, almost. Um, and of course, I incorporate a lot of astrology within my readings as well. So um, I guess that's a little bit about me. <laughs> All right. Yes. Go give thanks. I appreciate it. So let's just get into it. Um, so we often hear um, talks about memes and all those things about our big three, the sun, moon and rising. And you'll see uh, people say, what's your three? And, you know, all those things. So can we let's just start off with the first one, our sun sign. Can you let us know what is our sun sign? First of all, how we can find what our big threes are and go into the, the sun sign. Of course. So the sun sign is really the most popular, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone knows, mostly everyone has a little bit of uh, knowledge about their sun sign. And a lot of people actually, that's their entryway into this self-development of astrology, you know, reading it in a newspaper, a magazine. We don't read, read newspapers anymore, but magazines, Listen, blogs, just... book, toe up exes. You didn't date it. You know, you didn't date <laughs> too many Scorpios or something going on. It's a mess. <laughs> You right. know, so we normally will keep track of everyone's sun sign. Um, and of course, it's, you know, when we think about the sun, it's our life source. Mm -hmm. It is what keeps our uh, solar system going. And without the sun, it would be no us. It would be no earth. So, right. you know, and people do that a lot. Like they joke with Leo and they are very annoyed sometimes with Leo because they are very showy and boastful sometimes. And, mm -hmm. you know, even Leos is funny who are like, you know, because, and I'm saying that because Leo is ruled by the sun. Every the sun. zodiac sign is ruled by a planet. Um, or in this case, you know, Cancer is ruled by the moon. And mm -hmm. 
Leo is ruled by the sun, not necessarily a planet, but you get the point. So even them, you know, it's they're known for kind of taking attention no matter where they go and uh, really being expressive and not ashamed of who they are. That's your son. Your mm -hmm. son is what you naturally feel to act like as okay. you know within having this um human experience mm -hmm. so um the sun it is it's really interesting because one part of it it's annoying for astrologers and people <laughs> who are just in the spiritual community because it's mm -hmm. like you know people all you hear is oh, i don't believe in astrology you know i read about being a libra and it doesn't make sense or aquarius are, are like that yeah and I libra. Know. Air signs are the most uh, skeptical when it comes to, other than Gemini, I, I think Gemini is about the only, is the only air sign that really, uh, well, okay. and I think it's just, what'd you say? I said, we're like, okay, I can see that, you know. <laughs> well, I think you all are just so open to learning, being from that mercurial trickster energy you're willing to listen you know, mm. Geminis are uh, ch very childlike, so children are I wouldn't say easily influenced, but they're open. They're not closed minded. You get what I mean? So I and do. not to say Aquarius are, but they are very intelligent. And when you've lived a lifetime to where you've always been smart or you've always been right with a lot of things, you yeah. instantly assume. So anyway, the sun sign is um, your expression. Um, it is um, it, I would say it's somewhat of like a default setting. I think that um, depending on your moon and depending on your rising, it can be hard to really express that because it's a bit of an insecurity sometimes about it. Um, but I feel like your sun is what you can always lean on. It is... Um, it's also really good. A lot of the times we talk about, you know, our Venus and our Mars and even our moon. And I'm I'm real bad for this. Mm -hmm. um, but <clears throat> really, the sun is where you will find your natural flow, like uh, you being a Gemini sun sign. Correct. Correct. Right. <laughs> and with me being a Sagittarius sun sign. Mm -hmm. um, yes, we are polar opposites, or you know, some people would consider that an opposition in astrology. Mm -hmm. But we're two two sides of the same coin, so we, excuse me, will naturally gel together. It, yeah. You know, when you find somebody who's compatible with your sun sign, mm -hmm. you will naturally find that it's not this forced relationship. It's not okay. this. I got to try to prove myself or keep explaining myself um, as to who I am. They just naturally get it. So, so I have a question with that, though. So when you see these things, like I see them all the time on social media or whatever, compat compatibility setups is so some of those are, are actually true. So do you think like Gemini and Sagittarius should be together per se or, you know, or or they just or is it a specific dynamic? Okay, so I think that it, to answer your question, yes, I think it's very important mm -hmm. because your son is how you're acting. Now, as we know, persona and acting when it comes to the spiritual world and how, you know, how we come off um, or how we express ourselves, you know, we can go into a deep rabbit hole of that. But in general, you act a certain way. So if you're mm -hmm. acting like that most of the time, you need someone who can energize your soul and not right. drain you. So mm -hmm. that's why it's so important. Sometimes if um, if a, uh, a Leo is dating a, let's just say a cancer, they mm -hmm. can feel like a lot of their fire is constantly getting put out because of just the differences of how they see things. Cancer might be more concerned with the home and family, not mm -hmm. understanding why you need to be out in the club all the time or um, why you're so, you know, attention seeking and the Leo right. might not see it like that. They're just trying to express and have a good time. Mm -hmm. But to answer your question, yeah, I think it is very important. I think most signs um, are compatible with mm -hmm. their opposites. I actually think Sagittarius um, is extremely compatible with Gemini. Those are one of the matches that I think actually work very wow. well with one another. Granted, given that you're dealing with two individuals who have done 
some spiritual work. None of us are ever perfect, but you got any people who are super immature and don't want to do the work and want to constantly point the finger, you're always right. going to have a problem. But mm -hmm. yeah, I think they work well together. Um, I think that Aries and Libra can sometimes be a bit of a pull. Um, That's a pull. You know, it can be a little a bit difficult, you know, mm -hmm. but if you I always tell people to answer your, to answer your question too, yeah. um, you should always be open and, and understand that everything that a lot of the things that you need to learn in this lifetime, you will learn through the opposite of your sun sign. So Sagittarius needs to be very open and willing to hear a Gemini and not just think they're talking and actually take in what they're saying. And then Gemini has to listen to Sagittarius when it comes to kind of getting out of the details and just seeing the bigger picture of things. And it's not always important to know the how. If that makes I sense. think that I think that's um, unique that you say that in that way is because, uh, and especially in the dynamic that it shows, because me and my mother, I'm a Gemini and she's a Sagittarius, and we know how like the the mother daughter dynamic, you know, getting to know um, the woman in front of you or the child in front of you, and seeing how just like you said, learning to listen and learning each other's, you know. Um, points you know and so and i think one of the things you said even when it comes to compatibility even if it's like the worst times ever if you're aware like you said healed if you're aware of um where you need to grow and where you need to work on then even the most impossible you know can be possible for sure uh before we go on i want to just say, shout out to people in the comments um uh, we had um star starlet davis she said peace queen peace to and she also said, Leo gang gang, you were describing my homie, okay? You were describing it. <laughs> and then Angela, we have, uh, she said, peace, peace to you all. If you're just joining me now, peace to you all. Um, I am Puda Darling with the Alien Black Girl Podcast. Um, and we're here with Crystal Neath and we are talking about the big three, okay? And that's our sun, our moon, our rising, and it's, its significance. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. Um, please be on topic of what we're talking about um even you can ask your um questions about the the signs and all those things um she will help you she is an astrologer okay so um yeah so let's continue so we were talking about the sun so let's go let's shift into how that sun and moon affect one another and what is that moon that moon sign yes so um one last thing i want to add about the sun is that it's also how you restore your energy you know so many times we get depleted or like especially for empaths when they go out in big crowds and things like that mm -hmm. always know that you know sometimes it's the things that are right in front of our face the faces that we avoid mm -hmm. um you know that sun is very important to restore if you are a um if you are a virgo sun weirdly enough um if you can now of course most people would say they need to go to work right because virgo works uh, you know deals with all of that but no seriously you know virgo always also deals with our health mm -hmm. and um holistic ways of doing things so a simple tincture or tea or you know just kind of calming the nervous system always resort back to that sun sign a sagittarius might need a trip a gemini might need a good book or need to talk most times um you know or you know heal the throat chakra so i think always know that your sun is where you can resort to when it comes to replenishing your energy. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, and you asked a really good question about how does it merge with other things and mm -hmm. how does that work? Yeah. Um, to your point, um, you know, it's uh, we are very complex individuals and that's why it's good to have these conversations about the sun, the moon and the rising. Mm -hmm. um, because one point that I wanted to make about how does it, excuse me, merge or change or whatever the case may be, the a big thing that people forget is the the placement that your the house that your son is in is mm -hmm. very important as well. For example, mm -hmm. um, and I and I also didn't tell you either. My, I don't know if I told you this, but my mom's a Gemini, and then I'm a Sagittarius. So, uh, that's crazy. See? Okay, yeah. Soulmates, but, listen. Look, some way, some way, mm -hmm. shape, or form, most definitely. I love mm -hmm. it. Um, but the house that the sun is in is important too, especially for the you know, I, I think we're at a point now in 2023. We're not trying to make non-believers believers or trying to convince you to see it our way. Um, but 
I think for the non-believers, um, I think what you have to realize, or if you ever felt like I don't really resonate with a Libra placement or my Pisces placement or my, you know, whatever placement it is, look at what house the sun is in. Mm -hmm. So we'll more so get into that when we get into the ascendant, but you're uh so we have these different houses and i'll try to keep it super simple yeah I was like, I, hey, what are the houses go ahead go so ahead. um so the houses are basically different areas of our life they represent obviously different areas of the sky but you know to make it simple it's different areas of our life okay. the first house will always be how um who, our body how we look how we express ourselves naturally take notes go ahead <laughs> <laughs> naturally ruled by aries our second house is taurus what we own um you know some of our feminine aspects all you know each house rules something seventh house is relationships 12th house is mental illness 10th house is your legacy and how you'll be seen in the world um you know so depending on where the sun is placed meaning where the sun was in the sky when you were born mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to house placement you'll have a, a little sprinkle of that energy within your sun and how you act so like for example you could be a do you know what what do you know what house your son is in by, by chance i'm just going to guess as an example but do you know listen if you give me like two seconds you don't listen i got an app astro matrix all those things no, no, don't play me i'll pull it up like, wait, wait, listen astro matrix the pattern listen i'm in it okay but so go my... ahead and wait. And while you're pulling that up, I'll just use, um, I'll use her as an example. Okay, she's a Gemini, all right, which is known for being, you know, talkative, chatty, sometimes pulling gossip, you know, just all over the place, chatty, all these got things. The tea, baby. Look, always got the tea, but <laughs> she's very earthy. She's very grounded. Something about her is peaceful, even in her voice. You know, you just hear these certain things that give you more of a Virgo tour. Capricorn vibe. I'm cussing you know, May 24th. Oh, yeah, you're on the cuss too. Okay, got you, got you, got you. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, so there you go too. So she probably has a lot of tourist placements as well. And to my point, you wouldn't some of the traits that you might say Gemini's act like, she might keep more in her head, she might not really express that because Ooh. depending on what house her son is in, it'll Eight. give her. It's an eight. I was, I was going to say, or maybe Scorpio mm -hmm. um, with perfect example then. Oh, my gosh. I should have just used my first mind. Um, oh, my God. What does that mean? What's wrong so that me? means that uh, that was actually the first example I was going to give. If you're a Gemini with moon in the eight, I mean, with sun in the eight, you're going to be a more mysterious uh, Gemini. You're not going to, you're going to be more private, um, you know, and what comes off and what's your ascendant? Do you have strong earth placements? Um, Libra, Capricorn. I have Capricorn. I'm either Gemini or mostly Capricorn in my, in my areas, but my ascendant is Libra. Your ascendant is Libra. Okay. So here we go. So it, it, she will, we'll get into the ascendant soon, but the point is, because her moon is because because her sun is in the eighth house, which is the perfect example, she might come off, she might seem more Scorpio like than the average Gemini. Her energy of Gemini is merging with the energy of Scorpio, hence she's into um occult knowledge mm -hmm. um it's transformation uh things that scorpio rules she's going to be a gemini who probably in a social setting is a bit more laid back is a bit <laughs> more mysterious mm -hmm. she's not necessarily going to be the one hopping around maybe if she had a few drinks because scorpio energy has a low tolerance for it call me out call me out call me <laughs> like, but yeah, so you have to look at that too. So for people who will feel like they don't really associate with some of their sun sign, um, you know, uh, characteristics, mm -hmm. always look at what house the sun, the moon is in, because it'll give you more of a description as to why she's not jumping all over the place. And she's more mysterious, more laid back, more grounded than the average Gemini. So that's just an example. Does that make sense? Oh, I didn't make that sound too confusing. It makes sense. And thank, give thanks again for those who are watching. Um, I'm, I will do some of the comments. Again, if you guys have any questions, please you can ask them. So we have Big Sag, 
uh, Serenity, she's a Sagittarius. That's the homie. I, I'm a Gemini. We go. Uh, Angela, she says she is a Sun Taurus, a Moon Leo, and an Aquarius rising. Oh, okay. Bet, bet, bet. Personality, personality. So, um, you know, so just, you know, for her example, she said rising in Aquarius, Sun in Taurus, and what was her moon? Leo. I Moon and Leo. Mm -hmm. uh, so Moon and Leo, Aquarius, Taurus. So perfect example again. It can be annoying because as a Taurus, she might not. And granted, we didn't even get into what house her son is in. But just that mix up in itself. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Earth is more compatible with water. OK, so Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn, Earth signs are have an easier energy with Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. It's called a sextile in astrology, or you know, they might even be more compatible with other earth signs. Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn. That is called a trine in astrology. Uh, okay. These are more your easier aspects. What we were talking about earlier, sometimes. Um, so when you have such a, she has a, this, that duality of that Leo, because opposite of Leo is Aquarius. So she might always feel like, you know. Aquarius doesn't want the attention. You know, they're they're concerned with fixing and helping mm -hmm. and being the humanitarian, mm -hmm. but they are the most social, anti-social zodiac signs. Mm -hmm. Like, and then Leo is the opposite. Um, and I believe she said her moon was in Leo, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, she did. Yeah, so it's like the hidden celebrity. It's like the hidden star. And a lot of Moon and Leo people, I hope that as they grew, like as they were growing up as a child, mm -hmm. that that, uh, that ability or want to express themselves was massage. Because yeah. if not, they always have this insecurity because the Moon in Leo is very uncomfortable. The, mm -hmm. the, 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 the Sun rules Leo. It wants to be seen. It doesn't want to yeah, be seen. Yeah, and you're in so its moon position. So it's like, yeah, okay. It, yeah, it's it's so much stardom underneath it all, you know. So anyway, but yeah, um, the yeah, it's very important to know who you are because then you don't waste so much time mm -hmm. in situations that um, you know, are not for your better and higher good. And so. and and she, before I uh, read her comment, her responses to you, first she said, yes, I agree. Then she gave you uh, a round of applause. Um, yeah. and so, but yeah, that's um, some cultures, um, the Indian culture, they use astrology for like matchmaking and doing all of those things. Like it's a part of, you know, their everyday lives. You see like, ah, their houses or, you know, all those things. So very, yeah. very much to what, whereas our culture, we're not... When I say our culture, the American culture, we're not used to having that. That's something really foreign to us. Where in other cultures across the seas, like they're like, yeah, you don't use astrology to figure out what's going on. So it's really about being that open mindedness and thinking outside of yourself and learning outside of yourself to know yourself, to find yeah. out who you are. Um, and so we have Star here. She says she is a Leo in the sun, um, sun and Leo, um, Leo in the third house. Moon in Aquarius, and her rising is Gemini. And her rising is Gemini. She said her son is in the third. Mm -hmm. And she's so a Leo. She, and she's a Leo. So there we go again. A situation to where she might resonate more with Gemini energy. That's and I would, Yeah. And see, <laughs> I wouldn't suggest that, um, you know, and, and it's so annoying, right? Because Geminis get such a bad rep. And um, they actually are, I love Gemini people so much. And they actually teach the world to loosen up a bit, you know, uh, and, and, and you know this very well with having your son in the eighth, you have dealt with a lot more than people even know because the eighth house forces you to be more secretive. It forces you to go through dark experiences you know it's scorpio just sitting right there with your son so you could even be falsely accused girl don't get me started on that you know scorpio yeah. energy will you know all people will swear but now she's a sex trafficker and i know you're secretly plotting to take my man it's like girl prove it looking at i mean no not me uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like it's important to, to her mm. you know having that her son in the third you know, she is, she can really resonate a lot with Gemini, you know, situations, uh, communication, podcasts, um, you know, she needs to write, journal, um, really, 
you know, don't waste her energy. Like, I think mm -hmm. one good thing about Gemini is that they're amazing people to talk to. But, um, you know, what do they say? Don't cast pearls or to swine. swine. Yeah, to swine. Mm -hmm. Like, Gemini has to watch that because sometimes if people are not ready for the information that you're giving them, it's it's a wasted energy. And that's that step back that we take. Um, but, yeah, so she could be. Received. Thank you. I received that. <laughs> Look, girl, me too as a Sagittarius, because everybody be like, I ain't asked you your opinion. I'm like, like you did it. You're like, right. Okay. <laughs> You're right. Look. <laughs> so, yeah, so she should really, she should look into, um, you know, just the, uh, the energy of Mercury and Gemini and how she resonates with that. I think she said her her, her rising was too, or her moon. Something else was in Gemini. I her rising was in Gemini. Her Leo um, is in the her moon is Aquarius and her Leo is her son's Leo. Her son is Leo. But she just, okay. She said, are you sure? Because if her rising is Gemini, her rising is Gemini, her moon is Aquarius and her son is in Leo. Third her, house. Her, her son is in Leo in the third house. Okay, she said so all her. facts, all the things you were saying. She said all facts. Perfect. Perfect. All yeah. facts. All yeah, right. So we're going to, let's see. She said, yeah, all facts. And one more before we go into the moon phase and what the moon is, we have Sasha. She says she's Cancer Sun, um, Gemini Moon, and Virgo Rising. Mm -hmm. And so look at you bringing all your Mercury people out, honey, because they said, oh, we, we, we come in where we celebrate. Retrograde was like, okay, we, we, yeah. <laughs> we are tolerate. I love it. No, because so um, Gemini Moon. Mm -hmm. um in Virgo rising and I know we'll get into the the rising sign and significance of that and the uh, significance of the moon sign too but um she is a, a a cancer sign so she is naturally people come to her for um not even help nurturing they feel they will feel naturally um taken care of by her. Cancers are very self-sacrificing towards people. Mm -hmm. They are amazing mothers. They're, they, they just, they, they're amazing um, homemakers. They are, um, you know, they can even be really amazing. Cancers shine in business because everything they do, they put their heart into. Mm -hmm. um, but one thing I will say is that, um, you know, with that Gemini energy that she has in that Virgo rising, actually the Virgo rising really helps her out. She has a lot of mercurial energy too. Mercury rules Gemini, Mercury rules Virgo. Mm -hmm. So she just has to um, really organize her thoughts and she has to put herself in a position to know that, um, you know, how she feels and how she thinks is valid and it is heard. But sometimes, um, you know, that, that Virgo rising can really nitpick at her Gemini moon. Oh, you're over thinking oh you're you know you're looking too deeply into things uh that but that virgo rising it's kind of good that it does that because it also balances out her sun sign because sometimes everybody can't handle the heart that uh cancer people have sometimes so mm -hmm. another person who would very much resonate with mercury um strongly if that makes sense it does it makes sense all right so the moon sign what is our significance of our moon signs okay so oh, and again and everyone in the comments and who are watching if you have any questions feel free to ask them um and we'll i'll get make sure she sees them okay, yeah for sure um so the moon is your how you've experienced life mm -hmm. forget how you acting forget you know all the other things it's how you have experienced your truth this lifetime the moon deals with a lot of things that have been projected onto us the moon sign deals with a lot of our hidden insecurities um our you know what some people would say are our weaknesses is the things that we don't really want people to see um sometimes you know it's our needs though as well um you know the the moon sign is very important because like i said sun is very important for compatibility as far as uh, equally yoked transfer of energy and not feeling drained trying to like overly um explain who you are and just being okay to be you mm -hmm. but then the moon sign takes it a bit further and says okay oh you're gonna let me express who i am and kind of act this way but when i when you learn about my trauma or me being raped or me being this or whatever like 
how do you like how do you uh look at that as a uh as resilience instead of a way of using this against me the moon sign is where we are a bit more paranoid um it's our dark femininity and it's not a bad thing Mm -hmm. um but it is you know you get into a deep conversation when you talk about how your mother was towards you uh Mm -hmm. things that she dealt with when she was pregnant with you these are common things that most people know are found within your moon sign. Um, and, and you will notice that the sun will have more of a light, vibrant, blah, this and that. And then as soon as you get to moon, Hello. it's kind of like, who? It's like you your no matter. Can yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it really, it, it can be like that. Um, but it's also more than anything, your needs. And mm-hmm. I think um, when we talk about your needs being met, that is the next layer of a relationship, you know? Um, So depending on where your moon sign is, that's what you cannot do without long-term. Scorpio moon is going to need passion, depth, understanding. Capricorn moon is going to need someone who accepts that, yes, I might have some times of maybe taking things too serious or may Mm -hmm. fall in a little depression or something like that, or uh, may get too caught up in business. But I, you know, that massage that work with yeah. me through that um mm-hmm. so that is your your moon sign is your um your needs what you cannot go without it is important because um if you date just based off the sun sign well like they say if you can't be with me at my worst why should you have me at my best <laughs> not saying the moon sign is the worst but the moon sign is oh, the worst. <laughs> <laughs> and you just have to make sure. So moon compatibility is important mm-hmm. as as well um, when you're dating somebody. And just like the sun, wherever the moon falls, it will have that energy merged within it as well. And, and according to the house as well? Right. Based mm-hmm. off that house, mm-hmm. that is what that moon sign is now kind of merged with or marinated with. You know, it'll kind of have that feel to it. OK, so for me, I have a Capricorn moon um, in the third house, the third house. OK, you have a Capricorn moon in the third house. Mm-hmm. So um, like uh, for your example, um, the moon prefers to be in cancer. OK, that's where it's at home. That's where it's comfortable. You know, it can you know, when you're in your own house, you know, the dishes might be dirty and I might not have cleaned them, but ain't nobody here. It's OK. It's my house. This is where I'm most comfortable um, versus when you go to your maybe stuck up grandmother's house who, you know, just wants you to sit on her her couch where her. You know, it's like you, you can't do what you want to do sometimes when mm-hmm. that vibe isn't there. It doesn't mean that as a Capricorn moon, you're just doomed because you will hear a lot of negative uh, talk when the moon is in Capricorn. You mm-hmm. just have to know how to work with it. Um, so um, the moon is more concerned with the family the lineage, where I come from, nationalism, my heritage, cancer things, um, you know, what I believe at my core. And Capricorn is when you come out of the house. It's who you are in business, mm-hmm. when you die, what you're known for, mm-hmm. um, what what strangers, the 10th house or Capricorn rules, uh, people who really, really don't know you. Like, we really, really don't know Mm-hmm. Beyonce, you know, we really, really don't no, know. I like it like that, <laughs> Look, right? And, and me too. And that, but that's the tenth house. People think they know you, but that's just mm-hmm. kind of how you're seen. So, you know, it it can be a it's a very challenging moon placement. But if you work through it, um, and if you work with some of your other placements, luckily your moon is in the third, and mm-hmm. you're very familiar with third house energy because you're a Gemini. You know how to work with that. So you're a person who has to talk through the darkness, Ooh. talk through your emotions, um, find someone who can deeply understand. Like you definitely need somebody with Scorpio energy. Mm-hmm. I would say not even looking at the rest of your chart because um, you need that deep loyalty. Um, you need someone who is uh very unique and kind of able to keep up with your fun flighty Gemini energy, but also very serious, dedicated, loyal, and driven. So your moon sign will kind of show you those things when it comes to your emotional 
needs. Give thanks. So in the comments, we have Nefertari Strong. She said, peace. Peace all. And if you're just joining me, we are discussing the big three here with my guest, the lovely Crystal Neath. Um, she's explaining to us the significance of the big three. And if you have any other questions, you can put your information in the chat and we will discuss these. Also, this is a good time not to just learn about yourself, but learn about others too. Maybe your significant others, your friends um, have these placements. And it's also good to know your friends' placements, not just people you're trying to get into their draws, okay? Because it's for all relationships even your children your parents you, you you may see like oh my god this is why me and my brother don't get along because I'm doing this and I should be going like this you know what I'm saying so it's good to to bring about harmony and how we can better get together okay so in the comments we have um I did have a request for the um the energy of um Pisces Leo Leo what does that what is that dynamic Pisces um sun Leo moon Leo rising how how, how how is that dynamic so to me what instantly like falls over me when i hear that is you know you have this you have these conversations sometimes with people and i was actually having this conversation with my um with my aquarius sister um and she was saying how um you can create the life you want to experience yes i mm -hmm. if if my child doesn't want to go to school and wants to live on a beach she can do it if i want to you know so when I hear that, I instantly feel that, yes, it's okay. Glamour is the word that should be highlighted with this individual. So perfect example. If this person is like glamour, man, I'm like sweats. I'm not doing all of that. I don't want to be over the top. I don't want, I would encourage them to fall into, um, really creating heaven on earth this lifetime because Leo is all about uh, the experience and having fun and being able to be you unapologetically. And then to me, Pisces is this energy of spirituality, certain levels of the occult. Um, you know, Pisces is just the deep, deep, deep waters. So mm -hmm. for that personality type, it can be very annoying because you're hella deep and you're very psychic and you're very intuitive. But at the same time, um, when you don't, sometimes when other parts of your personality don't really express that, or they seem a bit more caught up in other things that can be a little bit more, um, can, be, can, can be considered more on the, I'm just enjoying the earthly experience. I'm not trying to do the most and dive that deep, you know, areas. Mm -hmm. You just have to find a person um, who really understands that um, your pizzazz, your glamour, the, the the dramatic responses that you have to things sometimes are not meant to be harshly judged, but understood. Water mm -hmm. and fire can really be a hard dynamic to get together. But um, but I would highly suggest express who you are. Um, you know, you know, find someone who can kind of help ground you a bit. Um, mm -hmm. Because Pisces is a little aloof and kind of, I want to sleep or, you know, I have this dream. And if you can be with people who can kind of flow with you, mm -hmm. put structure to that. Luckily, Leo is fixed. So once you find somebody maybe with some cardinal energy who can help you start things, look, I mean, I'm going to push you off the ledge. We're mm -hmm. going to start now. You'll be able to continue those things. Um, so yeah, that, that and of course it, it's super complex, right? You know, mm -hmm. we're talking about what house the moon is in. What All right. Is in. Yes. So for the moon signs, we have some folks with their moon sign and their house sign. So um, Star again, she, her Aquarius moon is in the ninth house. Um, so the first thing that I feel when I see that um, is an individual who is not just intelligent, but wise. Mm -hmm. And so I know that that can be frustrating if it's like, well, I never got to go to college or I, I don't see myself as this individual. I would highly suggest that they lean into always being a student in life um, because the ninth house represents, um, you know, really being traveling abroad, you know, learning about different cultures. Um, foreigners are seen in the ninth house. Um, she is a very unique person. I can bet my bottom dollar. She probably always feels like she's very, um, even people who are unique might not have nothing on her um, because of, you know, Aquarius being the, um, 
the 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 one who is very they say the most misunderstood um and then having that ninth house which naturally rules Sagittarius being bigger than life she should really be learning a lot teaching a lot studying mm -hmm. a lot um whenever she finds herself stressed she should lean into um anything that uh kind of sends her down the rabbit hole to educate herself and don't just keep all these amazing things that you know and learn to yourself she's like a walking book almost and she might not you know she in is. grant is she do you know her yeah she you're describing her for sure <laughs> all okay yeah. okay cool yes but she has to teach be willing to pull people aside she's um i'm hearing medicine woman but it's it's actually um what do you call it she, she said, a, yep. she yeah, said yep. she, we yeah yeah we talked about a, we talked about herbal um, um herbalism classes today so yeah, yeah you're right. there you go. She's a teacher. She she will she's actually the wise one, you know, and, and I don't mean to go there, but it's just it's so much out here on the internet. And I'm always the first to say, I don't know everything. Fuck no. You know, I just teach what I know. I say what I know. But it's so many people who are so sure of everything, and I know everything, and you're wrong. You need those humble individuals, confidently humble individuals, confident mm -hmm. humble. You know, like I think. I believe in popping your shit. I believe in expressing who you are, mm -hmm. showing who you are. But some people just get beyond cocky. And it's, you can't tell them nothing. They don't want to teach you nothing. You should already know. She's not the type of person who could do that. She would have to all, which I doubt she does anyway. I'm, she's the type, she's the grandmother. She's the person, even though she's young, I'm sure, is the one who kind of pulls people aside and teaches them that wisdom um, that, you know, other people you know, might not have run into. Yes, give thanks. Uh, you're getting kudos. Like she really is. She definitely is. That's her. Yeah, you described her. Absolutely. We have um, Sasha. Her Gemini moon is in the ninth house. So similar to your friend who we talked about, mm -hmm. um, her Gemini moon is in the ninth. So I think that gives her a healthy balance of, you know, sometimes they say, I know it's a lot of Gemini's on here. Don't come for me. But I just realized there's a lot of Gemini placements here. So y'all better represent. No, look, yeah, look, y'all better. She's doing us justice. She's loving us. Okay. She's she's okay. I do. I love Gemini's. And and, and you know, it took a Gemini to teach me. Cause I, like I said, I'm always willing to learn, baby. You couldn't have told me five years ago that I would be in love with a Gemini energy. Because for me, it was just they won't sit down. Like, you know, they just they're they want to be too free. They got too many things that they're doing and it's just too much for me. But until I realized, no, you have to re relax. First off, you got to relax and you have to understand that everybody is different and will express that a different way. So to answer her question, um, Gemini being, like I said, I wasn't trying to be offensive, but they say a jack of all trade and sometimes a master of none because it can be hard for them to sit down and finish what they start before they go to the next idea because I'm really good at this and I'm also good at that but then I can also craft and Gemini is so amazing at so many different things it's hard to kind of just walk through that one door and just stay there and then go to the next but what I was saying to her is that it's it's amazing that she has her moon in the night because it'll kind of help balance that out she can find that thing study that thing on a deeper level um and like I said the teaching aspects ro are rolled into the ninth um certain aspects of our bloodline and lineage were shown in the ninth house uh okay. teachers gurus um you know all of that is shown in the ninth house um like i told you earlier uh mm -hmm. foreigners uh people who are different from us um bigger than life that's the jupiter's house jupiter is the the greatest benefic it comes to bless you that's why sagittarius can be very kind of loud and all over the place because they really want to you know a spongebob right they kind of want to blow um the rainbows out their ass they're not trying to be annoying they mm. just want you to be happy that's jupiter so her 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 uh her moon being in the ninth um it's all, like i said with the other lady to fall into higher levels of understanding higher knowledge philosophy is all sagittarius because, is it because of that ninth house energy yes because okay. the ninth house is naturally um and i guess that that kind of mm -hmm. kind of leans into the rising so um, the houses are naturally ruled by a certain zodiac sign. Yeah. Aries is the first zodiac sign ruling the head, 
-hmm. ruling the first house. So it naturally always rules that. But depending on what time you were born, you know, Taurus might have slid up in that first house. So slid now, what'd you say? I said slid up in that thing. Look, look. <laughs> don't, hey, don't start acting. Don't, don't play with no devil, mom, please. Son in the eighth. Because we know we could be some freaking motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Look nasty, look, look mm. freak, but ain't nothing wrong with it. Enjoying our sexuality, nothing mm -hmm. wrong with that. Absolutely. Um, but that is, that's, you know, super trade of sun in, the, sun in the eighth, moon in the eighth. You know, you'll make a lot of sexual jokes or you might say things and you ain't even trying to be sexual and people, you know, take it like that because it's just, it's, it's marinated within that uh, experience. So yes, to answer your question, depending on her rising sign, um, it put her moon in the ninth house um so you know that's just kind of how it is but it, like i said it gets a bit complex because based off the rising sign now that ninth house has t you know is is also ruled by taurus so you got her taurus. rising is virgo okay so her rising okay with her rising being virgo so back to you know even to what i was saying she you know take a look at her ninth house Mm -hmm. Um, and then once she looks at her ninth house, she can see what, what, uh, Zodiac sign is on that cusp. And now it's just going to be merging with that ninth energy, but just in general to mm -hmm. not complicate things, yeah. regardless, the ninth house is always going to be higher knowledge, foreign matters, um, higher education, philosophy, all of that. Okay. Give thanks. Give thanks. We have a uh, serenity Aries moon in the second house. Yeah. So money, uh, look, dare I say and trigger everybody soft lifestyle is the soft, serenity. <laughs> soft lifestyle is to me in the second house. So, um, you know, moon and Aries is very, it's something else. I'm gonna just tell you they want what they want when they want it, how they want it. I said what I said. You know, it's it's she's it's also there. a Sagittarius sun as well. I'll just put that out there. Okay, cool. So that 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 helps even more. So yeah, that helps a lot because um her moon is in fire and her sun is in fire. So she can understand herself a bit more than someone else who is <sighs> someone else who has like earth moon you know earth moon uh ascendant gemini and uh and maybe sun in pisces when you have so many different energies it's, it's it's even harder to understand yourself it's not saying that she still can't have a time of you know breaking down who she is we all will um but you know aries moon is very temperamental but they're very passionate they inspire people um, she would probably end up doing well in business. Um, she could make a lot of money for herself having that moon in the second if she allows herself to have the confidence to really tap into that. Um, sun being a Sagittarius um, automatically kind of makes you a little bit bigger than life. You know, it's it's very optimistic. So as long as she uses her sun in Sagittarius to whisper to her Aries moon, Relax, calm down. I'm tell you one thing: Serenity ain't to be fucked with. Excuse my French, but no, you listen. You sound like Serenity. I yeah, because she's saying. already trying to calm herself. Sagittarius, mm -hmm. we're people forget we're a fire sign too, so we have anger issues as well. We just do it. We're because we're the oldest fire sign. We have a better a way of hiding it than the Aries and the Leo. Leo ready for the drama. Maybe they ready what you say. Aries right there like, oh, I'm already here. I'm on the front line. Sagittarius like I'm sitting back. That's why they're the both. Archer, you know, I'm going to kill you, bitch, but I'm keeping you from distance. I'm going to try to calm myself down first. So when you have all of that fire, she needs air. She needs somebody who will, like you, who will say, hey, look, I appreciate that about you. Mm -hmm. What do you have to say? It's okay breathe relax and you know i'm generalizing things you know this is very general i don't have all of the her she story, said but, uh she said uh two things she said she said uh get out my business bookie so you right on point and then um she said you're on fire you know okay yay yeah. yeah you know so it's just she just needs that person who can um very much allow her you ever see that guy who's super laid back he quiet but his wife in the middle of the dance floor like get it get you know like she could be super laid back for all we know but 
maybe not the dance floor. That's not, that's not, that's, let's not use that example. But that guy at the bar who's having his drink and maybe his girl is just talking like a motherfucker to everybody in the bar. <laughs> and she can do her stuff. You know, she can be a free spirit and he's not offended by it because he's laid back and he knows I'm here to allow her to, you know, grow and express herself. And, you know, I'm just here to balance things out, you know. And so I, I find that Sagittarius people um, do well with energies like that who will allow them to express who they are give thanks she said you are what did she say she said you are very specific so she give thanks oh that's a good thing yeah. i appreciate that yeah and so next we have um angela her her moon is in leo in the seventh house oh i see her with this like i see somebody putting like um you know if she's vegan i'm sorry but like i see somebody putting a um like a fur coat on her like it gives very much she needs a partner who understands deeply the importance of compromise um you know she needs a partner who uh understands she needs people around her who understand it ain't always about you but it is i'm making it all about you and because i make it all about you baby and because i love you and you the shit and yeah i'm buying my girl you know uh, a new ring and a and a nice chain or you know um just treating you like royalty. so let's not use materialistic things but just really honoring who you are mm -hmm. um i naturally give that back in return um so i think she has a healthy balance of um yes moon in the seventh i feel like relationships can always be very karmic the seventh house is our dc so it's our past a lot of our past life energy hanging over there so mm -hmm. she does have to be careful in relationships to not over glamorize it you know like we watch movies like twilight you know and twilight saga and you know jason whatever the hell his name is killing for her like she wants that oh <laughs> like jason what was it not jason oh, I was, his name was jason what was his name girl i was a, i was in potterverse so i'm Look, I like Son in the eighth. Or what Edward, is the Edward, eighth? Eddie, Edward, 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 you know, like just these, um, you know, she might not realize that. And maybe if she's like, no, I'm not even like that. I would suggest, yeah, find somebody who really appreciates you and treats you like royalty. And she also said, yes, yes. understands that compromise. And she's one of the people who, you know, when she gets, you know, I don't know who she is now, but like the more she matures, she can be that woman to say, look, you don't have to, com you don't have to settle. You know, we all have to compromise, but you don't have to settle. Um, you know, I think she would be a great, uh, like, you know, person to say things like that. Give thanks. We have um, an Aqu we have a, an Aquarius moon in the eighth house. Mm. I hate to say this because it sounds so. Look, I had to put it in a glass. See, this the sun, sun and second shit. It was in a little plastic cup. I didn't feel good with that. I'm like, mm, I, like I would have used a red solo cup if it's the first thing I saw. So <laughs> what? said, oh, whatever, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I love it. Like, don't play with me. Mm -hmm. I almost popped a bottle of champagne. I got some uh what prosecco in the fridge, baby. It was about. I'm like, no, nah, let me be sober, no, so I can have been right. Listen, you look. <laughs> um, but uh, Aquarius Moon, um, in the eighth house. Mm -hmm. Um, I hate to say this, but that definitely gives the stereotype of the alien. You know, we that is something that is definitely overused in astrology, but when you feel so different it's hard for me to keep trying to convince myself that i get along with everybody and i think um moon in aquarius is already very to me it's a difficult placement um because i feel that as much as sometimes you care about the world does the world give up about me you know like i think sometimes it can feel like that friends are of course extremely important and highlighted networking circles and having someone who really uh loves you and cares about you a group of people but also um 
I think it's important not to put too much emphasis on other people because people will be humans. We will disappoint. Um, it's not always a reflection of you. Um, and so I think that Aquarius moon um, definitely needs th that outlet, you know, those as much as they might not want to, they need that, that friendship, that companionship, um, the need to kind of uh, not what you know, but who you know, but with it also being in the eighth house, you know, I don't want to get, too dark, but she probably has seen a lot of the weirdos of the world in the worst way, you know, and in the best way too. Um, she do well by being around people who understand and uh, don't partially judge some of her unique ways of looking at things. And um, of course, anything in the eighth house definitely needs to be, um, you know, she, oh, she could also have some very, dare I say, unique and weird kinks. <laughs> she could, <laughs> could kind of have some things that you know i'm gonna keep this to myself but i enjoy watching this porn and i know other people might not watch I it. Like, I like it i like Look, okay I like house okay and she might not even like porn you know it's just a, that wasn't whatever a yeah but it's just you know you really need somebody who understands the depths of your soul and who is going to be your friend she needs a partner i repeat she needs a partner who she can feel comfortable with sharing her darkest secrets with and who is also a really good friend who won't judge her. Give thanks. She says, um, first of all, she laughed. Um, then she, what did she say? She said, yes, absolutely. Um, been learning how to move through this. So everything you were saying um, is in alignment. So give thanks. We have in the comments, we have star. She said, definitely a lesson I'm learning. Companionship is important. Um, and yeah, so give thanks. Um, she said, give thanks for sure, for sure, anytime. Um, and so we have another who is an airy moon in the second house. <clears throat> I feel like it was, an, it was another airy. Wait, moon did we do that already? No, no, we didn't do her already, but I think it was a lady on who on yeah. here who had same Aries moon in the second. Yeah, it's the same, it's the same as Serenity's. Yes, yeah. the same serenities, right? I thought we talked about that. Yeah, so her, so it would be everything that I was describing about serenity, but just to do a short recap, um, I think that um, I, I'm hearing, I'm hearing your friend's energy, like, like mine. I love this, like you know that little kid who has mm -hmm. that blanket that's dirty as hell, and they mm -hmm. just won't let you wash it because it's mine. Oh, wow, it, yeah. I think that's a very loving. Thing. Like I like, look, my sick ass Scorpio placements loves the idea of somebody, you know, your mind, you know, I, I, I'm, I think that could make a good friend, long story mm -hmm. short. Mm -hmm. um, but I also feel like a lot of Taurus, a lot of Aries energy, always be willing to look at the other side of things and not take things too personal. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, it could be that Puda is so busy, you know, typing up vlogs and running around if she has children that she didn't call you back or didn't text you back or something like that. And it's literally nothing personal. It's just that they were having so many other things going on that they weren't able to really focus on you the way that you might have needed. But I think Aries Moon, I love Aries Moon. I get along with them naturally very well. Mm -hmm. um, and I think just being in the second house is very important this lifetime for you to focus on, um, you know, what you value, what you need, what you desire, what you have built for you, not through someone else. Um, and of course that Aries moon being very self-oriented will help with that. Give thanks. So moving on into the rising sign. Um, this is what I'm not really familiar of like how it really helps us. But so what is the rising sign? And if you're watching, you can go ahead and pull up your uh, like, if you like me, I got my little chart up. You probably can't see this, but I got my little chart up, you know, trying to see where my placements are. But what um, is the significance of um, the rising? What is it? And wh what's the other name for it? And the ascending. The ascending. <clears throat> yep. So the ascendant or the rising sign is um, basically the zodiac sign that was rising on the eastern horizon when you were born. Mm -hmm. This is hella important because it sets up the rest of your chart. It tells us what your, it's the reason why your moon is in a second. It's the reason why you marry a Libra. It's the reason these are the things that you fell short of last lifetime. 
or lifetimes before and your energy said you're gonna learn today so you're gonna learn to focus on this it's also that is your chart ruler so if you're a scorpio rising your chart ruler is pluto you need to know everything about pluto if you're if you're a um, taurus rising you need to know everything about venus if you are a um, let's say Aries rising, you need to know everything about Mars. If you are a Taurus rising, you need to know everything about Venus. If mm -hmm. you are a Gemini rising, you need to know everything that there is to know about Mercury and the things that it rules. If you are a uh, Gemini, what's after Gemini? Uh, Leo? Cancer. If you're a Cancer Nothing rising. A Gemini child, I don't know. Look, she's like, I don't know the rest of them. <laughs> I Why can't you help you. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm asking. But no, if you're a Cancer rising, you need to know everything about the moon. That is your chart ruler. If you're a Leo rising, you need to know everything there is to know about the sun in astrology. If you are a Virgo rising, you need to know everything about Mercury. And uh, some people argue Chiron, which is the wounded healer. It's actually an asteroid, um, but it's very important in merging its way deeper into the astrology chart. I have a question. That word you just said, Chiron. Chiron. Is that that C-H-I-R-O-N word? Yes. Listen, okay, let's talk about this. Let's bring it in. I kept saying like, Chiron. Some people Chiron. Say Chiron. I've been like, you know how like Chevy? So I've been like, Chiron. Like Chiron. Like Chiron. Yes. So Chiron. Yes, Chiron is very important too. It's not an inner planet. Um, It's not our big three, but it is after you get to knowing, okay, this is how I'm supposed to act. This is what my needs are. Some of my, you know, some of my pain that I might experience. Now let's get to the biggest trauma I will ever experience in life. One of the biggest traumas I will ever experience, in my opinion, is shown through Pluto, um, shown through Chiron. Chiron is our wound. So if you have Chiron in the 10th house, you've always had an issue or a problem with authority. What about People the night? Chiron in the ninth. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this could be an issue with um, the school systems or higher education. Uh, this can be, um, you know, um, whenever it is this time of you to teach or learn, there can sometimes be issues. Um, sometimes when Chiron is in the third or the ninth house, which is our learning styles, we might learn differently from other people. But like, for example, um, if Chiron is in one of those houses, which is our information houses or our learning houses, you might really, you actually want to run towards that. We find often in life our biggest wounds and our pain and things that we deal with. Um, of course, it could be issues in immigration and past life and things like that. Um, you would have to be a bit more careful with, um, you know, just... Um, you know, if you ever married a foreign person, I hate to say that, but it could be some karmic situations associated with that. Okay. Um, mine the, is, but, it's in Cancer. I just said, I know we're not on Chirons, but I'm just curious. So mine is in um, Cancer in the ninth house. Okay, so that's wounds with the mother. So, mm -hmm. or wounds with your be being a mother, getting mm -hmm. pregnant. Um, you know, yeah. all of these things, Chiron is going to. Oh my God, I got like a download or something. I don't know. My ear is ringing like Let that. it out. No. Like this, this live is full of energetic, <laughs> spiritual women and people. So it's it's in there. So you go. Like it's very possible, Jim. It is like. very possible. Download and bleh, upload. Okay? Look, so we ready. We ready. But yeah, so the sign that Chiron is in in the house, you have to merge those things together and actually go towards that. So um, Chiron in the night doesn't mean that you don't what i'm like so i need some kids is that what you're saying no 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 it doesn't mean that necessarily it just means that look at your relationship with mama mm -hmm. look at your relationship with how she is how you are mm -hmm. um how it's affected you on a deep like you know everybody's like oh the the uh what do they call it trauma uh, um D daddy daddy issues or mommy issues not people say that like we talk about it no you would really be a great teacher on how to see your parent or see your mother as a person outside of just mama separate the mama title and let's go ahead and slap her name on her so you can see her for her instead of the what she did or did not give um mm. you know or maybe mama dealt with a lot of 
issues and pain and things like that and you were there healing her through that um so it's just it's different ways that it can express itself but Chiron you don't want to run from it you mm -hmm. want to figure it out uh lean into it heal that area um you know and or it can be in that life last lifetime you had nine kids and so you made sure this lifetime mm -mm, you won't catch me slipping I think it's reverse I need to have them now because I don't, I don't in my past life I don't think I had any you don't think you had, and that could be. I think that was an unfulfilled mission that I didn't do. Like everything was cool, but I didn't have legacy. So I think that in this lifetime, especially the way my true north is in the 29th degree, um, I think like they're like, this is it, sis. Like, okay, had them. So yeah. Do you, so do you have any children right now? Nope. Okay. Um, you know, so. Look, that's a whole nother can of worms we ain't talking about on this, this, this <laughs> life. But once again, deep conversations around mm -hmm. what? Motherhood. Motherhood. Being a, being a parent. My mama. You know, um, my bigger philosophies around that. Mm -hmm. All mm -hmm. of that is going to be a trigger or a highlight for you mm -hmm. this lifetime that you want to go towards. So, Tracking. Um, so to put it back into terms of... Um, you know, with 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 the how we were going through, Virgo is sometimes argued eventually going to be moved into the area of being ruled by Chiron, but it okay. is it's ruled technically by Gemini. So, um, did you have any other questions about Chiron? No, we're gonna go back into um, the rising. We do have some folks that have some of their rising signs up. Um, there's the Gemini rising in the first house. Right. So one thing I want to say is that your rising will always be in the first house. It's your rising oh. sign. So the rising, your chart is kind of like this. Okay. Okay. Oh, shit. Like this. So your, <laughs> look, this is, how about we do this? Come on now. So um, you have your ascendant, you have your descendant back here. You have your MC and you have your IC. Okay. And these are the most important points of your chart. All right. And so everybody's ascendant will always be the first house. That's what that it now. is. Okay. But it just depends on what uh, zodiac sign okay. is, in that, is in that area, was rising on the eastern horizon when you were born. So that's how it is. So she's rising in Gemini. Yeah. So she's a rising Gemini. So mm. um, she felt, you know, like I was saying earlier, you would... Um, and let me just do a rundown real quick for the people who are like, wait, you stop with Virgo. So oh, yeah, Virgo, yeah. And then I'll get right back to that. If you're a Virgo, then it's it's Mercury. If you're a uh, Virgo, what's after Virgo? Oh, God, I can't think. Virgo after Virgo is what? Uh, let's see. What is that? That's late, uh, late August, September. And then what's after September? That's a Libra. So if you're Libra, Venus. If you are a Scorpio, Pluto. If you are a uh, Sagittarius, it's Jupiter. If you are a Capricorn, it's Saturn. If you are an Aquarius, it's Uranus. If you're in traditional astrology, it's Uranus or Saturn. Um, if you're Pisces, it's uh, uh, Neptune or Jupiter if you practice more traditional astrology. So anyway, those are the plans. If I could leave you with anything, I'm saying the ascendant is important. Learn those planets, learn those energies, because mm -hmm. that's probably a big area in your life where you fell short of last lifetime. You might have focused like, um, for example, with you being a um, what was your rising again? Libra. Were you being a Libra rising your last lifetime? Oh, yeah. Libra opposite Libra is Aries. So it was too much about. Me? fitness me body what i want last lifetime possibly um you know what i'm driven towards to where you could have felt like your marriage fell short mm -hmm. or you felt like the relationships in your life really didn't get the nurturing that they needed um you, it wasn't enough you know aesthetically a um aesthetically pleasing things around so this lifetime you want to um resort back to that ascendant and kind of lean into those things mm -hmm. um this is also they say how you should start pro you know a, a way to like start projects if you feel like man i can't i can't get anything started like i want to leaning towards the ascending can be beneficial too um for example for libra it would definitely be 
balance, moderation. Um, just because I didn't write the whole book doesn't mean that I can't write a few pages today. And that's okay. Um, so um, diplomacy, social um, social issues, um, issues within the government, um, you know, being partially humanitarian, uh, foster parents fall under Leo, Libra, I'm sorry. So these mm -hmm. things, you kind of want to always resort towards that as far mm -hmm. as like how you start things. Um, so that is the Ascendant. Now the Ascendant also um, is known for how you look. Um, the Li Libra Ascendant happens to be the most beautiful Ascendant oh, sign. The most beautiful <laughs> girl in the... I'm sorry, I had that my breath. They was mad, but do your thing, girl. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, Libra ascendant, Venus on the ascendant, girl. I know you spiritual, but baby, they don't want to see you in no juju because Libra on that Venus on that ascendant can really just, just you. Okay, a siren. Oh my God, this is such a siren. Mm. Like sirens remind me of like Libra ascendant, like go towards the ocean and people are like jump off the cliff now look can i tell that to my baby's daddy <laughs> do it do it you know it's just people you and you do you bring a lot of that like i was saying earlier that comfort that that um that uh what is it it's 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 very peaceful like something about you is just very peaceful your ascendant is how you come off to people who somewhat know you your 10th house your mc is more so strange as people on the internet who don't know nothing about you i can sometimes come off as a leo i'm not a leo i really don't even have a lot of planets in leo like that mm. but i can come off like a leo to extreme strangers um you know that's your 10th house versus your ascended these are people who kind of know you you know acquaintances and things like that i've seen her a few times i'm scorpio ascendant so sometimes mm -hmm. i can come off as a scorpio i look like a scorpio um so the ascendant is also your physical body what you look like you know so it deals with a lot of that and it's so important because it, it's it's the it's the blueprint Mm -hmm. So the rest of your chart, you know, it's the template and then everything else just kind of pieces all the other rest of the pieces of the story together. Give thanks. We have um, an Aquarius rising. Aquarius. Right. Aquarius rising. We have so, two. There's two with Aquarius rising. Right. There's two with Aquarius rising. Mm -hmm. So, um, right. So this lifetime, they would focus more on social issues. Mm -hmm. This lifetime, they would be great networkers. This lifetime, they could do amazing on the internet. Um, lean towards that. Socializing with individuals is very much needed because last lifetime, it was too much kind of like the Aries energy, but it was Leo. It was too much focused on um, the spotlight was so much on me or so much on how I saw things. I'm now ready to live an experience to where I'm seeing things from multiple different points of view. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, Aquarius on the rising sign. I know a lot of times I'm hearing like, you got me effed up. Like a lot of the times people can be offended by your ability to have a resting, not necessarily the resting bee face, but Aquarius ascendant, um, because they already are very unique because they already um, kind of have their own style and way of doing things. Uh, people already don't, you know, really get where they're coming from. And sometimes their friendliness, they can get twisted for, um, you know, it's not necessarily kindness or weakness for Aquarius. People normally don't play with Aquarius like that, but they just will really, um, sometimes they might meet a lot of people who at one point when they first met them acted totally different. And then once they got to know them, they're like, man, I really didn't see that at first. Um, mm -hmm. And the reason being is because Aquarius gets pegged as the most detached zodiac sign because they're like computers. They know how to be professional and mm -hmm. check you in a nice way and have a good day. You know, like they just know how to right. <laughs> do, they know how to detach, mm -hmm. but also get right out their mouth what they need to say. And some people don't like that. They, it can come off a little cold. It can come off like, do you really like me? I can't read you. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> it's very, but, um, but yeah, so Aquarius rising. Yeah. So they can have a lot of those traits and they are ruled by Uranus. Uranus. Okay. I think that is, um, what about cancer and rising cancer and rising? Oh, they say cancer risings have big boobs. <laughs> it doesn't always have to be the case. Um, but they also say that they have these circular heads. 
like these like these little cute beautiful like little moon faces um uh, 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 cancer on the ascendant i think that um you know it's 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 water right it's very mysterious it's it's the hidden aspect of life um you know people can just always want you to mother them and that's okay right you want to lean towards the ascendant and and live out some of those things this lifetime a lot of those things this lifetime but we can't take care of anyone else until we take care of ourselves and nobody cares about the past mm -hmm. nobody cares about what we've been through a lot of the times unless you're Not talking really. through a son in the eighth house who's willing to really get deep with you or somebody with some other water placements who wants to heal through that with you but mm -hmm. cancer ascendant um can draw in a lot of people from the past. They rule nostalgia. Um, uh, I would highly suggest that people with cancer ascending, girl, you better be into, I see she has Nefertiti already. Yes, they have to study their heritage and, you know, for black people, spirituality, hoodoo, voodoo, whatever it is you want to do, like, um, you know, all of that needs to be, even if you don't practice it, study mm -hmm. to kind of work through some of these things. Um, because, you know, it, it's just important for people with cancer and to answer no boundaries and to know that, you know, if people are taking your kindness for weakness, you don't owe anybody anything. So, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's just, it determines, you know, a lot about, you know, how you come off. Um, no one has said it, but I feel like somebody watching is one. So I'm going to say, what about, um, Capricorn, uh, rising? Capricorn rising. Um, Capricorn rising, that will be the rising sign of the, what I accidentally almost said, the resting B face. Um, <laughs> B, I find them very attractive, amazing bone structure, amazing skin. Um, Capricorn rising people, <clears throat> a lot of the times, um, of course, they can come off cold, but they're really not. They're just reserved. Mm -hmm. They're just preserving their energy. They like to have fun. They can be funny as hell. They can be very sarcastic. Um, of course, we know Capricorn, you know, it can be annoying for them, but very business oriented. Um, you know, they can be darker features, darker eyes, darker hair, being ruled by Saturn. Mm -hmm. Um they have just a very stoic presentation sometimes because of how resilient they've had to be. Um, and they're more traditional. So they could also dress a bit more in earth tones, more uh, more on the... Uh, now, I'm not saying you ain't got some Capricorn Risings who will, you know, not get ratchet, wear the Pacey's and things like that. But they tend to be more on that side mm -hmm. um, of things. Sagittarius Risings, they can be, um, you know, very sweet, very kind, kindness taken for weakness, very mm -hmm. jovial, um, a little chunky. Most Sagittarius Risings have a little extra weight on them or either a very tall hips and thighs normally stick out on them. So yeah, every Mercury on the rising, Gemini rising, Virgo risings are very small and little. Gemini risings are known for having these little, little mouse faces, mm -hmm. like Tupac, um, Kendrick mm -hmm. Lamar, mm -hmm. they kind of like that. Um, but anyway, yeah, so the Ascendant is very important because it sets up everything else in your chart. Give thanks um, in the comments. Um, if you have any questions um, or comments, please put them in there. So overall, my question with the big three is how do these align with, um, we talked about this early, other astrological occurrences. And for example, like our retrogrades, I don't know, a shoot star, Pluto <laughs> claim it. I don't know. Like how does the all how does how can we use our big three um in a, in, a, in a responsible evolutionary way in the midst of these occurrences because i feel like we have like what three more retrogrades a summer fall and winter again like we have mercury we have you know at least four a year every you know quarter i think and then you know so how do how do all of these planets in our houses you know go yes so to answer your question, you have natal transits, okay? And these are these are uh, degrees, okay? And that's not necessarily what we're talking about today. But depending on degrees and where these planets are, they have a certain conversation with that other planet called an aspect. Um, just like I said, she's a Gemini, I'm a Sagittarius. I can learn from her. Maybe she can learn from me. It's this natural flow of, you know, but we're opposites, you know? I, I will be with a Gemini and they will notice all these things. And I'm like, damn, I didn't even see that. Like, okay. And I'm, and I'm aware mm -hmm. to answer your question. It's really being aware of where these planets are 
in mm -hmm. your chart. Mm -hmm. If you know you're 29, itching up on 30, and Saturn transits back to that area every roughly 29, 30 years, you know that around the age of 28, 29, 30, you need to get ready for that Saturn return that's going to be in your third house or fourth mm -hmm. house, depending on where how your chart is set up. Right. So if you know where these planets naturally live within your chart, because that's the thing that can be a little confusing about astrology. Mm -hmm. I am crystal. I will be looking this way for the most part until I die. This is the mm -hmm. only body that I get this go around. So I got to do right. Okay. Right. Your yeah. chart is the only chart that you will have this lifetime. That never changes. It mm -hmm. is what it is. But the planets are still moving. Retrogrades are still happening. Uh, planets are moving into different signs all the time. The moon changes every couple days. So <laughs> The point is, if you know, for example, this is a very simple place. And my astrology teacher uh, started us like this. Mm -hmm. If you know where you, the moon is every day, start practicing like that. Let's say, mm -hmm. um, you know, the moon, I think the moon is, it was in Pisces last time I checked. I don't know where it is again. But if you know the moon is in Pisces mm -hmm. and Pisces, when you look at your chart, is rules my fifth house. Mm. Let me see what happens. Don't be surprised when the sun, when the moon is transiting your fifth, if all of a sudden different romances want to pop up. Um, mm -hmm. You're more attractive. People are more pulled towards you. Um, basically, when you know where your, you know, the planets in your chart and where they are, and when some of these things pop off like a Mercury retrograde, well, mm -hmm. if you know Mercury is going retrograde in Libra, and you know Libra is your second house, well, you better get ready because your money about to be kind of funny the next <laughs> month, you know, or it might go through some reevaluation, some changes. So, mm -hmm. You know, there's natal placements. You know, if I have, um, let's just say I have, um, for example, I have Venus conjunct Saturn, right? Mm -hmm. Meaning Venus is sitting right with Saturn. Mm -hmm. I will naturally have a harsher time in love than the average person. A lot of realistic occurrences, instant karma in love. That's always, I know that. You know, that's in my natal chart always. So when I know when Saturn is doing something or I know when Venus is doing something or whatever the case may be, I can kind of get myself prepared for that. So yeah. I think that it's a bit complex if you're newly getting into astrology, mm -hmm. but there are certain aspects to answer your question that you have within your chart that are always going to be there no matter what you do. You just got to learn them and get used to them and work with them. Mm -hmm. And then there are things that happen like Mercury retrogrades, Venus uh, retrograde, Saturn retrograde, Uranus retrograde. We had Mars not the other day. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mars, yes. Mm -hmm. So it is a time period, and retrograde in itself is when the planet appears from Earth's position to be going backwards. It's really not. It's just like they say, an optical illusion, but it seems that way. And we've noticed that as humans over centuries that whenever this happens, even though it's just an illusion, we be tripping or something happens mm -hmm. or, you know, something, something, happens. Something, right. something going on. Right. So it's a time of introspection, mm -hmm. depending on what that planet rules. It's a time to reevaluate what that planet is all about. Mm -hmm. And it's a time to reevaluate the area that mm -hmm. that planet rules in your specific chart because it will be highlighted and it will be under investigation for mm -hmm. the time period that that planet is going retrograde. So would it be safe to say, for example, um, I want to make sure if, if I'm even saying this right when I say it or am I here looking crazy when it's like a murder? You ain't never looking crazy, girl. You ain't never looking crazy, especially with me because I be fucking up all the time. <laughs> So for me, like, so since I'm a Gemini and it's ruled by Gemini, is it safe to say like Geminis and Virgos doing retrograde are affected the most? Yes. Very okay. safe to say. Okay. Very safe to say. Um, because th this is your chart ruler. But mm -hmm. the blessing in that is, you know, his ass well. Right. You know so I'm always well, you prepared. I make sure everything is good to go because when I retrograde come, I'm chilling. Right. Like, what am I supposed Thank to do? Is my bills paid? And, and, right? Cause <laughs> don't because if I'm not Mercury always it I, I always get caught slipping. Like yeah. always. So it's it, it teaches accountability a little bit. It's like, okay, let me do what I'm finna do. That's how I use the retrogrades. I'm like, oh my goodness, what do I need to do? Because if I whatever I forgot, Mercury retrogrades finna be like, oh hey. 
honey. Yep. Yep. Okay. Hey, All right. And two, now with you deepening your knowledge into astrology, mm -hmm. every time you hear Mercury is going retrograde in Aquarius or whatever it might be, mm -hmm. instantly pull that chart up. Find mm -hmm. the degree. You know, you can always hit yeah. me up. Um, but it'll tell you the degree. They'll say, you know, wherever it is and where it's going retrograde. At. You know that area of your life. If it's going through your third house, you better get your brakes changed. You better get your oil changed. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's going through your ninth house, you might have some issues with school. If it's going through your 10th house, you might have issues with authority. Um, mm -hmm. 12th house, you might have psychological issues, a mental breakdown, or a need to really look at how you think. So, like you said, it's not this fearful place you know, energy, but mm -hmm. you know, people be just capping when they make it like it's capping. not annoying that you just sat here for two hours and recorded a YouTube video, edited it for five hours, and this mug just disappeared. Woo! But to that, to, than that, that. to their point, mm -hmm. back it up, have the flash drive, you know, do everything to mm -hmm. kind of and take it easy. We were not you, you, your hand feels forced during retrograde season. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, uh, maybe uh, Pluto goes retrograde, you haven't been wanting to have sex now, you want to have all the sex. No, instead, look at why was it dormant before? Why weren't you wanting to be intimate? Or why, why weren't you high lit then? You know, look, <laughs> you know, it, it, hey, you know, so it's just they really force you to re edit and revise that, mm -hmm. that energy. And like Jupiter retrograde, when Jupiter is direct. You know, you can hit the lottery when Jupiter is direct. A blessing just might come out of nowhere and you ain't even do nothing necessarily. Right. Jupiter retrograde. Whew, you better bring them blessings from within you, be from from within you to the outside, because it's not going to just be flowing in like mm -hmm. it did before. Your optimism might be a little not on the optimistic side of things right. because Jupiter is kind of taking a bit of a rest, a little bit of a break, slowing down. Give thanks. Um, one last rising um sign we have here. Um, and again, if you are watching and you have any questions, please let me know. Also, Crystal, um, what is your um pay information? Um, in case anyone wants to um donate, give a love offering, um, because you've done so much great work um in helping us and assisting us today. Let us know um your information. Oh, well, I appreciate that. Um, and I enjoy being with you all. Mm -hmm. So, um, Crystal Neath, just like how it's spelled, um, my cash app is Crystal Neath 1221, um, all one word, lowercase. Um, and then my uh, PayPal is paypal.me slash Crystal Neath. Um, my, yeah, so that's that's what I have. Uh, my Venmo is at Crystal Neath, all one word. Um, so, yeah, Cash App is probably the most popular. It is mm -hmm. the dollar dollar sign crystal neat how it's spelled on the what you all are seeing 12 21 1 2 2 1 all right and i made a little banner right for you boom come through gemini come on yes, now. Make it <laughs> that's what i does um so we have um a rising um they said thank you so much crystal this has been so so informative. Um, they said many appreciations for your time and energy. Um, we're not done quite yet. She has well, um, we're gonna give Leo rising, the Leo rising. Yes, so um, Leo rising, it is said to be the most blessed to have fire on the rising sign. Leo, Aries Sagittarius. Now, also they argue that um, you know, Libra is the most pleasurable or beautiful, Scorpio is the most powerful. You know, you know, they have different things that they say about each one, some being better than others. Mm -hmm. um, but fire on the ascendant is always for the win, 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 because it sets up the rest of your chart to be in, um, in, in a good relationship with whatever zodiac sign is ruling that area. And what mm -hmm. I mean by that is Aries is the first zodiac sign, which is a fire sign. So Aries is fire. Scorp I'm, I'm sorry, Aries is fire, Sagittarius is fire, and uh, Leo is fire. Mm -hmm. So to have that fire on the ascendant really gives more ease to the rest of your chart. Mm -hmm. um, but Leo ascendant, they look like lions, man. Like that's the easy, their hair normally is like, it doesn't matter their texture, 4C, BC, I don't even know the textures, but it doesn't matter 
there is something about them. And even if they shave their head, it doesn't matter. Like something about them is just kind of grand and, and, mm-hmm. uh, and, and um, larger than life. Um, you know, they are, you know, Leo rules where we stand on the stage. It is the celebrity. They are, th- that is the, you know, it sounds very stereotypical to say, but they do, they really get attention everywhere they go when they don't even want it. It could even be as a, um, as a Leo ascendant, just like as a Scorpio ascendant, you could make, people very uncomfortable or very intense within your presence mm-hmm. or you could be very alluring or captivating leo ascendant is like has that issue to them they they cannot not be seen you know they cannot be admired or acknowledged mm-hmm. um sometimes people it can come with its drama as well because when you are the it girl or when you are seen or even if because it could be a leo ascendant even if you're a virgo or whatever the case may be you could, it could be very, um, you know, if you don't like all that attention, it can be very uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think for a Leo ascendant, they have to get into, to me, like, um, the arts, they have to express their childlike energy. If you want to put on a tutu and a fancy coat and wrap that shit up in a ponytail, do it, do it because <laughs> you inspire other people to be themselves and not to be ashamed of it. Um, so that's what I find about um, Leo's uh, Leo ascendants. The worst thing they can do is be in the background. The worst thing they can do is be ashamed of who they are, um, be insecure. You do not want to be. We all got a little insecurity, okay? Got a little some some. Got a little some some. A lot of <laughs> little, a lot of some sometimes, depending on the time. But Leo Ascendant has to really work on confidence and mm-hmm. beauty, and just really allowing themselves to express themselves. Mm-hmm. All right, give thanks. There, um, you have many appreciations for your time and energy. Give thanks for being so informative. And again, her information, her catch up information is here. I'll also put it in the description of this video. Um, one last time before we go, um, Crystal, go ahead and say where we can find you and all of your all of your things. Yes. Um. So, and uh, I also give thanks to you as well for even considering me as someone to bring on your podcast. It's such a nice thing to, uh, you know, dig into. I love astrology. I'm always willing to help in any way I can. Uh, And you are such a beautiful being yourself. So it's always a pleasure. Um, And you all can find me, uh, Crystal Neat. Um, And if you are listening to a podcast, it's C-R-I-S-T-A-L. N E I T H, and I am Crystal Neath on uh, most social media platforms Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube, and TikTok. All right, give thanks and give thanks to everyone who tuned in and who are listening. Don't forget to like, comment, and share the Alien a Black Girl podcast. Um, it used to be Black Librarian Podcast, but we have changed the name because um, it's about me, it's my podcast. But anyway, so give thanks. Will you all have a great rest of your week? Um, peace, peace.